Hey everybody! Today we are going to be learning about color. This is by Madrona, Emmy, Rahul, and Josh. Okay, so I know everyone is curious. Why is an apple red and an orange orange? We first need to understand that all colors are simply light. And what is light, you might ask? Well, technically, light behaves in two ways, as photons moving as particles in space and as electromagnetic radiation moving as rays in space. We see this specific electromagnetic radiation in a small range of wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum. This range of wavelengths are visible as light to us, and hence we call this the, physical, the visible spectrum. How the light appears depends on its spectral power distribution, or SPD, which represents how much power or energy is at each wavelength. For example, here we see the spectra of daylight, an incandescent light bulb, a fluorescent light bulb, a halogen light bulb, a cool white LED, and a warm light LED. What's interesting is that evidently, the incandescent spectra is very different from the cool white LED spectra, yet in a room and when we perceive them, they look pretty similar. Obviously, there is a lot going on behind the scenes. So how is the human eye seeing and interpreting this light? That's a good question. Our eyes are very complex. When light enters the eye, it hits the retina, which contains photosensitive cells called the rods and cones. The rods are responsible for intensity and shadow and picking up on the light changes, while the cones are responsible for interpreting colors. On this graph, we can see the rods and cones are sensitive to different wavelengths of light. The rods are most sensitive to wavelength of around 498 nanometers. Then there are three types of different cones, each with a sensitivity to different light. One perceives blue or short wavelength. One perceives green or medium wavelength. One perceives red or long wavelength. Fun fact, color blindness is due to deficiency of one type of cone. The most common effect is the difficulty in distinguishing red versus green hues. For example, this is how a colorblind person would see a stoplight. Actually, every color can be made from these primary colors of light, but the viewed color depends on how light is perceived. There are two models, additive, or RGB, and subtractive, or CMYK. Let's start with the additive model. This is how we see color on a computer and anything where light is directly transmitted. The additive model begins with black and uses red, green, and blue as the main components because they have the largest amount of visible light on the visible spectrum. As more red, green, and blue are added, it becomes whiter and whiter. This is why, as we add together all the different light colors within sunlight, we eventually just see white light rather than many individual colors. However, how we see color on photos, magazines, and any printed material is different because they reflect color and their color properties are subtractive. Subtractive colors begin as white. They use cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, or black, as the main components because the first three are the secondary colors to RGB. As you add filters to the white light, such as ink, this white light takes on the appearance of color. As different inks or dyes pile on, different wavelengths of light are further absorbed or subtracted, and some are reflected, eventually leading to all visible colors being absorbed, meaning that no colors are being reflected and black is seen. Paints are another example of subtractive color mixing. This is what happens when different colored paints are mixed together. We start with a stripe of cyan, then brush over it with yellow, resulting in green. Magenta is then painted over, resulting in black. What is happening here is that all of the paints absorb the wavelengths they did previously. So when they are combined, we are left with the wavelengths or colors that both paints reflect. When we have all colors of the rainbow, all wavelengths are eliminated from what we see because each paint will absorb some wavelengths that the other paint reflects. However, the perception of light is not always as clear cut as mixing two colors and producing a unique third. It is quite common to have two colors appear to match under one lighting condition, but not when the light changes, such as these two examples of lettuce. This phenomenon is called metamerism. Let's take a look at this actual lettuce and a framed picture of lettuce. They look the same color, right? 
Well, it turns out that they actually reflect different wavelengths of light. Yet the rods and cones in our eyes filter the wavelengths so that the same color is perceived. For example, the actual lettuce on the left reflects all wavelength blue rays, whereas the picture of lettuce on the right reflects only larger wavelength blue rays. However, when taking into consideration the amount of rays a given color and the wavelength of each ray, about the same amount of stimulation occurs for the respective RGB cones in the eyes. Hence, the eye sees the same color. On that note, let us be done with today's lesson. We hope you enjoyed learning all about color and take a second to thank your eyes for all the work and interpreting they do. Thank you.